So in the same Kvach Abad, they interview Rabbi Usher. One second. Seven gold, let's say pronounce his name. I say it right. Yeah, Zevingold. He's a long time uh, a shliach in Minnesota, 50 years, in the non Chabad shul called Adas Yisroel. And he's the rabbi of Avanash in Minnesota. And it's interview, his life is fascinating. He wasn't born a Lubavitcher, but he is a Bach, he came to 770. His whole story. He's a big time at Chochem. And he has many, he was a Bach in the 60s. So it's just it's a fascinating read. The Deher, mind you, had also interviewed him, but interestingly enough, there's a lot of stuff in the Kvach Abad that not in the Deher, that he didn't tell them, I don't know why. Beautiful Gishmaka things. So here's one of them. So even if you read the Deher, you did not read this. This story you didn't read. I encourage you to read the Deher, it's also beautiful. So here's the story. He says, till 1965, when the, before Tishrei, uh, when the Rebbe Sanchana was nostalgic, so the Rebbe would come every morning to visit his mother on President Street, 1418, which is today 1414, the dormitory of Yeshiva. Also, Friday night, the Rebbe would go to his mother before he went home for Suda Shabbos. The Rebbe would leave 770 Friday night late. Even in the winter, the Rebbe didn't leave 770 till 9 or 10, go to his mother, and then go home for Suda Shabbos. So he'd visit his mother, it would be a short visit, and then go home. Now, you, ever, you, you guys know that 1414, is on the same side of the street, it's on President Street, and the Rebbe's house is on the same side, two blocks down, after Brooklyn. And what, what happened is that they saw that instead of just coming out of 1414, turning left and walking straight to his home, he'd cross over President Street, and then walk down, cross over Kingston, and then walk down President Street, most of that middle block from Kingston to Brooklyn, and then cross back over President Street and go home. You follow? Just crossed over and then went back. He said, we wondered why the Rebbe did that, but guys offered Svaras. Nobody could figure it out. So one day somebody asked, obviously not, not, a, not a Bocher, and I don't think even a Chassid, but someone asked the Rebbe. And this is what he said. Why he crosses the road? <laughs> you know, friends, that on the other side of... of, of uh, of President Street between Kingston and Brooklyn is free. Free is that is a is the is the uh, the the building for the friends of refugees of Eastern Europe that uh, houses the there were all the work done there for Russian for Russian Jews. That's its headquarters. But in those days, it was actually a chesedish and there was a rebbe. His name was the Kozlov Rebbe that lived there. But in addition to that, there was a Kerala, a Litvish Kerala. Crown Heights in the 60s was, was a Chabad, Lubavitch was the minority. It was, a, it was the borough park of, 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 of New York and Flatbush, everything all combined till everything expanded and, cha and changed. That was the hub. You had the Crown Heights and then you had the Williamsburg. Borough Park was just em em embryonic in those days. So it was a Litvish Kerala. So they ever said, that uh, it says right now, as I said before, you used to go home late, winter nine ten o'clock. So the many of the Yungalait, the Colonel fellas, were back had come back to, to the Colonel to learn Friday night. The Rebbe said he walked by to listen to the Colonel Torah. He wanted to hear, and this is what he used. He loved he loves to hear the Colonel Torah coming from the Yungalait that are learning. Beautiful story. And hence, he would cross over the road to walk by that building. Now he adds over here, so many stories here how, we all know this, how the Rebbe's time is beyond 
precious. I recall when I was a kid that there was a write-up in, in was the New York Times about the Rebbe, and the fellow had submitted before publication for the Rebbe to, to, to see that it was accurate. It was the New York Times, it was a big newspaper. It was the first time for such a... And he wrote there that every second of the Rebbe is accounted for. They wrote it, crossed it out and wrote every minute. So the, he could have, you know, just... The Rebbe was saying not a second, but every minute. Is. That he was acknowledging because that you could see with your own eyes. So he tells an interesting story, story within a story here, as, as follows, um, with the Binyamin Klein all of a shalom. So the Binyamin Klein used to drive the Rebbe home at night. So once the Rebbe, you know, came out of his room and without warning, and his Binyamin wasn't ready, he said he was walking home. When he realized that, he jumps into the car. Now, the car's facing Kingston, it's facing the other way. They was walking left to go home. So he puts the car in reverse and he catches up to the Rebbe halfway down the block and asks the Rebbe, would, it, they will come in, it'll take him home, drive him home. So the Rebbe said, which direction are you going? So Binyamin related later, he's, he's actually his son-in-law told the story, this guy Shemerling, who heard it from, his, from Binyamin. He said, working all these years with the Rebbe, he knew what this question meant. And he answered right away, I'm gonna continue in reverse. In other words, then the Rebbe said, okay, got in. Had he, because what should have happened is now drive back, he's facing, you gotta go back to Kingston and then make a U-turn and then come around and go down Eastern Parkway and go up Brooklyn. And he realized the Rebbe did not want that his walk should be in vain. He, in other words, if it, if he walking left down Eastern Parkway, he would now go back down Eastern Parkway again. And so he knew that, that was the, he understood that was the question. So right away he answered, no, he's going to, you know, just get you backing up to the corner, then turn around and go, okay. She's just contrasting the story. And here it's 10 o'clock at night, and Everton's waiting for him and everything else. And then everyone crosses the road back and forth to hear the curl of the of the young fellas learning, learning uh, at night. All right, friends, have a wonderful day. And Mazer uh, Hashem, we'll see you all tomorrow. We'll finish the Maimer and then continue with the next one. Second mind visuals. Have a great and wonderful day. Enjoy. Oh, Morty joined us. Morty, what time is the flight today? Ramadha, we don't hear you.